What's up, YouTube? This is Miles B. I'm here to bring you another message. Hopefully, it can encourage you. It can help you to set your affections on God, to point you to Christ, to give you the pure gospel. I was contemplating about two things this past week. And the first one was God. When we say the word God, to break down each attribute of God is truly unimaginable. And before we go into that, I would like to pray. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We praise you for getting us through another week. Lord, I'm doing this video on a Friday. Thank you for getting us to Friday. Thank you for getting us to the weekend. Thank you, God, for getting us throughout the week, strengthening us, strengthening us, and giving us everything that we need. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that your Holy Spirit would be upon me today, that your Holy Spirit would be filled in me today, that your Holy Spirit of teaching would enable me today to articulate, to sow seeds of righteousness, to sharpen each of your brothers and your sisters and your people, God. These are your people, your sheep. We ask that you will feed your sheep. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. I pray for your shepherding spirit to be here with us. Amen. So I just want to, touching back on what I was speaking about, was I wanted to talk about the attribute of God, specifically the attribute of his eternity. God exists in eternity, past, and I was born on a specific date. You were born on a specific date. Everybody has a specific date. Everybody has a specific point of origin, a time when they they were born, when they, ex they exist, which means that there was a time when they didn't exist. The only person who never had a point of origin or a point where he did not exist is God. And this is where you get the scripture in the book of Revelations, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. He is the one who is and who was and who is to come. That's who God is. He's the one who is and who was and who is to come. He never had a point where he did not exist. He never had a time where he he is God and he has always been. He has always been. He's, he's in the future and he's in the present and he's in the past. He's so God that he can declare your future. He can be in your present and he can correct your past. Only God can do something like that. God is so God that if he be for you, who can be against you? That's why it's important to know who he is. So when you have some type of obstacle, when you have some type of difficulty, when you are dealing with people, when you're dealing with yourself, you can rely on the strength of God to keep you and to keep you safe, to keep you provided for, to keep you holy, to keep you grounded, to keep you rooted, to keep you focused, to keep you in his love, in the perfect will of God, to keep you in his grace, to keep you in his love, to keep you in his word, to keep you in him, to keep you plugged in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad when I feel, the old preachers used to say, I feel my help. 
you feel when the Holy Spirit starts to move and it is no longer you. And I'm so glad that he is able to be with each and every person that believes at the same time, strengthening them, encouraging them, giving them living water, living word to their life right now. So I want to focus on that point first, which is God and his attribute, one attribute, he never had a time where he did not exist. Eternity exists within him. In the beginning of the Bible, it says, Genesis chapter one, in the beginning, God. He's behind the beginning. It's not in the beginning, God was created. It's in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse number one, jam-packed with theological truth to meditate on God never had a beginning never it's mind blowing it's mind blowing as far back as you can think behind the beginning God just keep going back just keep going back just keep going back just keep going back God Never had a beginning. Now, you guys are like, okay, you're stressing that point, but I'm trying to get you to grasp eternity, just a, a drop of it. Because when you come into contact with the one who never had a beginning, your life is drastically changed. When you come into contact with the one who never had a beginning, your life is drastically changed. You will never be the same. He is an unlimited amount of power that we can tap into and have communion with and have a relationship with that he's done so much for us that we could be with him. It's the pure good news to humanity. Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk about a man who thought he was doing the will of God and came into contact with God himself. His name was Saul, and it's in the book of Acts chapter number nine. Now, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked for letters from him to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if, he, that if he found any belonging to the way, both men and women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he was traveling, it happened that he was approaching Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, and he fell to the ground, and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city and it will be told you what you must do. The men who traveled with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. And leading him by the hand, 
they brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he said, here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, get up and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. <clears throat> but Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he did to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the sons of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias departed and entered the house. And after laying his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you were coming, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he regained his sight. And he got up and was baptized, and he took food and was strengthened. And I want to read three more verses. Now for several days he was with the disciples who were at Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue saying, he is the son of God. All those hearing him continued to be amazed and were saying, is not this he who in Jerusalem destroyed those who call on this name and who had come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priests? But Saul kept increasing in strength and confounded the Jews who lived at Damascus by proving that this Jesus is the Christ. That was very lengthy for our time. That was very lengthy for this time and day and age which we live in because everything is downloaded so fast. If you're not moving fast enough, um, you your attention span can go somewhere. And if you're still in tune, I thank God for you because you have to allow God the time to work on you. We have to allow God the time to actually sit and hear his word because faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So even reading the word edifies your soul and your spirit in ways that is inexpressible, except in the book of Hebrews, where it says as a discerner and thoughts of the intents of heart. Um, the word of God is quick and active, it's sharp and it's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, able to divide bone from marrow, soul from spirit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It gets into your entire life and your entire soul and can speak life to you. What happens when we talk about the book of Paul, not the book of Paul, but what happens when we talk about the book of Acts of the apostles and the life of Saul, who changed his name to Paul, we're seeing right here that this man did not believe in Jesus Christ. He actually was a enemy of Jesus Christ and the church of God. He is setting his mind to put in prison anybody who believes in Jesus Christ anybody who calls on the name of Jesus Christ which was called the way in in the at this time it was anybody who was in the way they are going back to jail bound in Jerusalem he had authority and he was very adamant he was very passionate he was 130% with what he was doing 
And while he was on the way, God intervened in his life. Sometimes people can have God interventions that are just life changing. And it is to God's glory. What happened to Paul? What happened to Saul at that time? Saul and Paul are the same people. He met the one who never had a beginning. He met the one that we've just read about in the Bible in the beginning, God. He said his name twice. A light shined around about him. And Saul... As he was traveling, it happened that he was approaching Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him and he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And so he fell to the ground and they said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And his reply, his reply, who are you, Lord? He knew it was God. He asked, who are you? So interesting that God spoke to him and said, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Who are you? Who are you? It's, it's, it expresses so much that when you meet God, your soul replies with its core. The, re the, the reply was a core. It was a core reply. It wasn't, it wasn't some type of philosophical, I know who you are. I'm trying to do this because I'm trying to help you. It was, who are you? And it, what it sounds like to me is, I'm willing, whatever you tell me, because I want to know who you are to do whatever you tell me. I'm willing to do whatever you, whatever you ask me. Who are you? And I'll do it. There's, there, I know who I've just come into, con I've just come into contact with God Almighty. What is your name? Moses did the same thing. He came into contact with God and he said, who should I tell them that has sent me? Who are you? It's, it's so beyond us. We haven't met God naturally. And when we come into contact with him, we don't know what to do. Peter, <laughs> Peter, when they went up to the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus was with them. God on earth, Emmanuel was walking and he was transfigured before them. And they saw him talking with Moses and Elijah. And Jesus was talking about his crucifixion, his glorification. They they got the, the, the manifold wisdom of the plan of the redemption of humanity. They're talking about the redemption of humanity. Peter was so afraid he didn't know what to say, but he said, let us make three tabernacles for you, Lord. One for you, one for Elijah, and one for Moses. And it, the Bible says he was deeply afraid and he didn't know what to say. Came into contact with the divinity in Jesus Christ, the one who had no beginning, but he was born of a virgin and he transfigured in front of them to show how God he is, got a glimpse of it. And Peter, James, and John, who were with him, did not know what to do. They trembled. They knew Jesus. They, they knew his name. They just didn't know what to do. And so he said, let me make a tabernacle for you. Let me make a place where we can worship for you. And then he added the, the two others that came to visit that were talking with him. And then a cloud overshadowed them. And it was God the Father speaking down from heaven. And he said, 
This is my beloved son, hear him. And when Peter, James, and John opened their eyes and looked up from the trembling and the fear because it sounded like thunder, it was just Jesus. And so here we have Paul who is saying, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. God is Jesus. God, Moses, Elijah, Paul, Peter, James, and John, Miles B, and your name, you put your name in there. God is Jesus. God is Jesus Christ. And so he is telling him, I am the one whom you are persecuting. And when he says, who are you, Lord? Who are you who doesn't have a beginning? Who are you, the one who doesn't have a beginning? Who are you? I am Jesus. We have to meditate, dwell on it, soak up the truth of God so that we can grow in faith in who he is and proclaim his name. Now, later on, after he didn't eat, he fasted after this happened. He immediately, you know, in the scriptures, it says that he immediately conferred not with flesh and blood. He said he, he fasted and he prayed. He had a vision and then another brother had a vision and it came to pass. And when he had his hands laid on him by Ananias because Saul was blind after seeing that inapproachable light from God, the scales fell off of his eyes and he could clearly see. I once was blind, but now I see. I also think that we've heard that said, knock you off your high horse. He, he got knocked off of his high horse. God will knock you off your high horse so that you can be saved. He'll knock you off your high horse so that you can receive him. So that you can be in a place to ask, who are you, Lord? Some of us have never asked the question. Some of us have never asked the question with the motive that when you reveal it, I'm open to doing what you ask me. I want the truth. And Jesus is the truth. Saul changed his name to Paul and became an apostle of Jesus Christ who suffered many, many, many different things and ultimately was beheaded for the testimony in Christ. It is without the shadow of a doubt that Paul is in heaven right now and he is waiting. He is cheering the saints of God on along with the other apostles, along with the other disciples, along with our grandmothers and our grandfathers along with our ancestors who believed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us leave a legacy. Let us leave a legacy that when our children and our children's children see us, they see a life that met God, a life that was drastically changed, a life that proclaimed the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ, the pure gospel. And this is the pure gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I want to invite you to a moment where if you have any confessions, you can make them. You can say, God, please forgive me all of my sins. 
Wash me again with your precious blood. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose again on the third day. I pray that you would cleanse me and make me new. Make me a new creation. Who are you, Lord? You are Jesus. You are Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are the son of God. And I thank you for everything that you've done in our lives. And I pray that you would bless each and every person who hears this. Be blessed, be encouraged. Peace.